Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here with the smallest snake I've ever seen in my life. It is just fascinating. In this video, I'm going to show you this eastern ringneck, and it is by far the smallest one I've ever seen. Check out my playlist. I've done a bunch of videos on eastern ringnecks. I find them fascinating. But this one here is so small, I just had to do another video about one of the coolest, most harmless, gentlest snakes you can ever find, and absolutely the smallest one I've ever seen. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. This is a juvenile eastern ringneck, likely to have just been born. I'm holding it here and filming it in a rather contrived format. I've got my camera mounted on a tripod, and below me I have a plastic tub because he's so hard to hold on to. He's so squirmy, and I'm afraid if I drop him in the grass, he'll just completely disappear. So this eastern ringneck was actually found in my neighbor's basement. And she's told me that she often has eastern ringnecks showing up there. And she's not the first person to tell me that. I have several eastern ringneck videos, which I think you'll like, that go into detail and show some of the larger ones. Please check those out on my snake playlist or look up Nature at the Door Eastern Ringnecks. But... Uh, I've had other viewers tell me that they find a lot of eastern ringnecks in their basements as well, and they just can't figure out how they get in there. Well, they are so small, and all foundations and blocks probably have, and bricks have cracks and crevices in them, and they must find their way in through there, and they must find the temperature and humidity suitable for them to survive. Unlike many snakes, these snakes require probably a little bit more humidity in their environment to survive, which makes them also very difficult to keep in captivity. Eastern ringnecks, like garter snakes, are also known to be somewhat social and will live in seemingly pretty large communities in a very loose kind of community assemblage, shall we say. Eastern ringnecks are egg layers and they'll typically lay three to ten eggs in the uh, end of a season. And those eggs will typically hatch out in late August or September. This is October 1st, and this is likely to be a newborn eastern ringneck that may have come from one of the three to ten eggs that they typically lay. As I hold this guy and look at him, I try to imagine what he must eat. They typically live in the leaf litter layer of a forest. And in that leaf litter layer are all sorts of little decomposer insects that, and slugs and salamanders and tiny little things and springtails and many insects that feed in that layer on the decomposing uh, material. And so this guy will be eating that stuff. And I can't imagine if you wanted to keep one as a pet, people often ask me that, how it would be that you could uh, feed him and find the appropriate food for a guy as little as this. It's really, really amazing. So these snakes are typically will constrict their prey when they first find something they want to eat. And then they'll move around to biting it. One of the amazing things about this snake is that technically you could call him a venomous snake. Now, he can't bite you. He doesn't have forward-facing fangs. He could never even probably open his mouth big enough uh, to lay a bite into you. But it has rear-facing fangs with a tiny little groove in them where a uh, kind of saliva that has a mild venom in it will drip down. When the snake captures its prey, constricts it, and moves around to bite it, it will close its mouth on its prey and try to get one of those rear-facing 
teeth-like things to penetrate the prey. And in sort of a chewing motion, saliva containing a mild venom will drip into that organism and make it easier for him to eat it. Eastern ringnecks have a broad range and are found in many states across the United States. They are believed to be very numerous snakes, but there's little really good scientific evidence to prove that. But anecdotally, they'll seem to show up in pretty good numbers in some places. These snakes, like other snakes, are unable to maintain their own body heat and have to maintain their body temperature by using external sources of heat. So sometimes they'll be found out laying out on a, on a driveway or a sidewalk, sunning themselves to uh, increase their body temperature so they can go back into cool leaf litter and hunt. Other times they'll be under rocks near the surface that are warmed in the sun, and so they can benefit by getting warmth from that rock but without actually having to expose themselves. The literature on ringneck snakes suggests that they do not try to bite to defend themselves, but if picked up, will sometimes display, display a corkscrewing kind of motion uh, to escape from predators. Some of these snakes will also do another um, de predator deterrent in which they'll turn themselves over and display their brightly colored yellow or red underbelly, especially on their tail. But I've never actually observed this with any of the snakes that I've picked up. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door with the coolest little eastern ringneck that I've ever seen. Remember, if you like what I do here, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. But thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.